We got work to do. Welcome to How Would I Hell, a Supernatural podcast. I'm Kristen. And I'm Christine. And this week we're discussing Season 6, Episode 15, The French Mistake. With... Can you say that in a... Yes. Oh, The French Mistake? Yes, thank oh. you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> okay. So given away by were a you... giggle. <laughs> 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 it's our very special guest. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, yes. So for this episode, we brought in a very special guest. You may have heard him on this podcast before um, a couple times. And uh, and I think the very first time we had him on, he was like, you have to have me on The French Mistake. So he's back here with us, our lovely friend, Gerardo. Hi, everybody. So good to be back. (laughs) (laughs) It's so lovely to hear your voice, um, you know, since we haven't we haven't seen each other in so long. Since we don't see people. Hi. Hello. It's so good to hear your voice. (laughs) It's like people are still out there, right? (laughs) Yeah. No, it is. It's very isolating. Yeah. There's people beyond our little pod. Or yeah. whatever, whatever they're called now. Kristen's my only friend. <laughs> yeah, you're the only person I talk to. <laughs> oh, thankfully, we do have you know a little pod, but that's definitely a thing. Oh, I told I told you one time that people call it their quarantine, and you were like, "I hate that." Oh, I do hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Who calls it that? <laughs> I don't know. I saw it written somewhere. Thankfully, I haven't heard anybody say it. Christine's it's like, kind- I actually made it up. <laughs> I was expecting you to say it's cute. <laughs> I made it up all by myself. <laughs> uh, well, um, this is this is a very special episode, though, because this is the episode where Sam and Dean find themselves on the set of the TV show Supernatural. With an angelic hitman after them. True. Succinct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. Um, I've been hinting at this episode for I don't know how long. How did it hold up, Christine? I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I know there's been a lot of hype about it. You've definitely... It's been mentioned many times since we, you know, since the beginning or since early on. And I get it. It was shocking. There were there were many times where I just I it was so hilarious but also so cringy that I was like, "Oh my god, I can't. I can't deal with this." <laughs> like when they're pretending to act. Oh my oh, god. That, that has to be so my favorite good. part. It was so good. They were so good at like being awkward and bad. It was just so. It was, it was really good. Great. I loved it. And Jensen kept making the same face over and over. And I think that's yeah. something <laughs> that people do when they don't know how to act. And it's just, it was so fucking funny. It looked like he had to take a shit. Yes. <laughs> it was constipated. Like that kind of face. <laughs> it yeah. Was great. Is this the first meta episode? I can't remember. Like, no. where they, it's there not, right? A... Oh, we. What was the uh why can't I remember the, the monster name of it? at the end of this book? Yes. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that episode we find out that like there are books written about um supernatural. Uh, but that that's a little bit different than this in that it's it's telling their story, but with it still within their universe. Yeah, right. it's like yeah, exactly. It's part of the universe still, and the mm-hmm. books were right. Is that that's what you mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and um, now it was like an alternate universe. Yeah, is a little different. Yep. 
Yeah, I think I I definitely think I had even hinted at this episode back, you know, like the very first episode that we recorded, where I talked about like how oh, how meta this ep the season, not the season, this series gets. Um and th I think this is like the peak of like meta ness. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. it's insane. Like, what the hell are we doing here? It was <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know where you guys watched it, but I watched it on Netflix and they do that like um then, you know, and then like it recaps and stuff. Yes. Um mm -hmm. and I I was watching it with Anthony and I was like, Oh, it's Ruby. I forgot, I totally forgot about her. And then I was I looked over at him and I was like, I'm so sad that she ended up being bad because I loved I loved her character. And like when yes. you find out like how everything rolls, you know, it was just so I was so like sad. <laughs> That's so funny. Cause yeah, we haven't seen her in a while. So um I didn't I thought that was like dead and gone. And then it was so weird for them to pick it back up and then also for them to have her and Sam be together. It's like so <laughs> weird now. Oh, yeah. Well, because I mean, because they're actually married. And so it's just like, it's weird to see them together like that. I know. Yeah. I just wonder how much of the episode is like inside jokes, you know, like when they well, we won't, won't talk about it. But it's like when when they show like what Jensen's like um, trailer is like. And I'm like, I wonder if he's like <laughs> some kind of like new age, like, I don't know, he likes to go hunting or like helicopter, like you know, helicopter fighting or whatever it's called, <laughs> you know, like, I wonder if they're like making fun of him, you know, in some way and we just don't get it. And it's just like weird to us, you know? I hope so. Yeah, no, it, actually there's, there's definitely a lot of inside jokes in this, in this episode and, and probably all of them I, I won't be able to touch on, but, um, I, I did read through the official companion and they do touch on it a bit, you know, to say like, of course they had wanted to do, do this really crazy thing and they had wanted to in a, uh, like exaggerate the characters, like, create yeah. Jer Jensen and Jared and not have them be like who they really are in real life, but, but have them be a little bit more exaggerated. And so they did mention Jensen's trailer actually. And Jensen, that just that Jensen just really enjoyed it and was like, Oh geez. Like, I, I hope I get something like this next season. <laughs> um, <laughs> but not in particular that it was like representative of him. However, yeah. I think what I did read was that like the tanning bed in, uh, uh, Jared's house is supposed to be poking fun at him because he's actually come out tan like a different premiere party so he <laughs> <laughs> like maybe That's likes so to awesome. dance <laughs> yeah i love that That's so oh awkward my gosh. i know right they're so like why are you so tan <laughs> <laughs> they're having fun oh they actually have a picture of him on the supernatural wiki um at the scream awards and he just looks so he looks red tan like just so <laughs> like, <orange>. yeah. <laughs> yeah oh god poor guy uh, um but we don't get any music or anything like that right we just no. get straight into into it right okay um yeah so you you talked a little bit about the recap Gerardo and we do get a little bit of information um that Cass has been a little busy up in heaven. He's been fighting a civil war since he's trying to become the new sheriff in town, as he, uh, as someone explained it. But Raphael's going for the same job. So the two are fighting it out. Meanwhile, Balthazar has gone rogue and is running amok. He stole weapons, the weapons of Moses, and is using them to his benefit, including by... Well, I put destroying Ra Raphael, um, or that that's what I had thought. But we had Same. asked the question in that episode, like, is Raphael dead? Is that it? Like, th this salt of Gamora or whatever the crap it was, it just killed him. And now we know it didn't. It just destroyed his body. Yeah. Um, 
And then we see that the boys have also had plenty of intimate run-ins with a bunch of demons over the years, including Meg and Ruby. I was very confused because I was like, are we going to see Meg or references to Meg in this episode? But we did not. Um, no, I guess I think just it was her just... phone call. <laughs> yes, the goblet of blood phone call. That was so weird. Like, I feel like, I don't know. It's just a weird, like, visual, you know? Like, oh, totally. Yeah. You know. It was just, it was also just a weird thing to call back to. It was like, do th- they really need to set that up for us to remember, like, okay, this is how you can make a phone call this way? <laughs> yeah. Essentially? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so, but Dean and Sam killed Ruby together. Um, and so that's going to make for a little bit of an awkward scene later on. So the episode actually starts with, uh, Sam and Dean waiting out a storm in Bobby's house with a bottle of whiskey that's now empty when Balthazar appears and walks in like he owns the place. And I didn't actually catch it. Did they say where Bobby is? Because he is not there. No, they did not. No, he. No, they didn't. I, no. <laughs> he just, he's oh, just not there. Oh, you know what? There. They said, okay, because I have the transcript open. They actually did say like right at the very beginning. Oh, and that's fuck. Why I None of us it. were paying attention. <laughs> well, it's like literally the first line. Oh. So... <laughs> So that's why, probably. But <laughs> he says that there, he's in town on a supply run. He took a long time. <laughs> Take yeah, a sweet but, time. Uh, wait, but okay, wait. At the very beginning of the episode, there, like it's panning from the window. It's raining outside and it's going like over his computer. And I don't know. I paused it because I was like, what the fuck is that picture of? Because it to me, it looked like meat, right? Like raw meat. And it fucking was. It was like a picture <laughs> of mangled remains, apparently. He what? Was reading, he was reading some, like, uh, website called Strange Happenings in Forensics. <laughs> and it was, like, no. somebody, they were reporting on, they, they found mangled remains. And it was literally just a picture of, like, raw meat. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> I'm so glad you checked, though, because I, I actually forgot, like, once the episode got started, that was pushed from my mind. But as I was watching it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> that is so insane. No, I, di- I didn't see that at all. Um, yeah, I wonder what was happening that he was checking that out. <laughs> I know. But also, I, I put down Balthasar. Like, what do we think about him looks wise? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, like it. I know, right? He, yeah, it he works. looks like Jack Sparrow. Mm, yeah. Like a funky Jack Sparrow. He's a bit piratey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could see that. He's an angel pirate for sure. <laughs> I mean, pirate. literally, he like stole weapons and shit. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's like plundering heaven. Yeah. <laughs> what a badass. <laughs> so, um, Balthazar puts down a bowl on Bobby's desk and a box of tables. All he's just like talking nonsense. He's not giving any sort of clue as to what the hell is going on. And he keeps on making references to the Godfather, um, which I have seen once before in my life. So a lot of these references were just kind of like lost to me. Um, have you guys seen the Godfather? I have. And I don't think that like they were supposed to make sense. I, I like I think it was like him still trying still talking kind of crazy you know um but yeah I just thought that was weird and then we were looking at the because I was like what is the French mistake right because I didn't know like what reference that was to or what that was referencing and um Anthony pointed out that a lot of the episodes in this season are named after old films which the French mistake is an old film um Mommy Dearest was another one that was listed there so I just thought that was really interesting, like, if there was some kind of theme that, like, they were going for, you know, hmm. for this season. Yeah. Gerardo, you should just take over this podcast because we have not <laughs> picked up on that at all. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I mean, we've definitely talked about in the past, they used to use a lot of um, song titles. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting, like, now that, because we know, like, Kripke was really into music and, and classic rock especially like Dean 
And, um, and that was like his, you know, his part of supernatural, like him really putting himself into it. So it's interesting that now he's gone, that there, that, that theme has changed a bit to, to this. And I wonder if that's like supposed to be Sarah Gamble, who's now showrunner kind of putting her, her spin on it or like her little touch, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's right. He, um, Kripke left after season five, right? That's that right. was the, yeah. okay. Okay. Which is funny. I, it, well, before we get there anyway, um, it's Kripke. Is that really him? Or is that an actor? That's an actor. Yeah, I had no yeah. Oh, okay. It's a different dude. I know. Okay. I was curious to see. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting the choice they made with the different crew members and stuff because, like, obviously, you know, Jared and Jensen are, are themselves, and so is Genevieve. But they didn't choose to have anyone else, well, except for Misha, but they didn't choose anyone else, you know, to play themselves. So I think that would have been fun. Fucking yeah. Misha. I know. Oh my I God. love him in this episode <laughs> so much. Oh my God. Yeah, we'll definitely get there. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, so Balthazar, though, is making all of these crazy references, and he starts looking for some blood of lamb. He starts looking in Bobby's place as if he just has blood of lamb lying around, which he he probably does, actually. (laughs) Um, Dean and Sam look very confused, and they ask, what does the Godfather have to do with anything? And Balthazar explains that they're living in it, basically, and that Raphael is in the role of Michael Corleone. Since Raphael is after them, um, and he sent a hitman now, um, and also Cass is hiding underground, so he's not going to freaking help them, Balthazar is doing a spell, and he doesn't say, like, what it is or give any other information than that. But he draws a symbol on the window and lifts up his jacket where he has a huge wound. Um, And then just then we see this, what we know now to be the hitman, arrive and come charging at them. And Balthazar calls him Virgil. And he tells them to run. And they jump through the window only to land outside of it on a pad and now it's daylight, and a director yells cut. And a crew member announces the scene in Marker, naming the show Supernatural. And, then we get and the somebody slaps Dean's ass, which I was really jealous of. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> it was like, good jump or something, and like smacks his ass. Yeah. Right. That's so funny. Um, so I didn't actually look this up. But the fact that we get this reference to Virgil, I've definitely heard the name before, but in the sense of the 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 poet, um, the Asian poet, but not in the sense of like a Bible person. Well, you know me, you know, so religious and and well versed in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> is what, I'm, is what I'm getting at. What I'm trying to say. Great. <laughs> is that I don't know. Um, okay, so Virgil was Dante's guide. Oh. Yes. Really? Yeah. Just just I saw I saw that on the Google. And I remember Virgil being in Dante's Inferno, but I couldn't remember like in what capacity or anything. So what y'all were talking about was ringing a bell. But Dante used him uh, in in the uh, story to be his guide through hell, or you know, all of that. In the so was it supposed to be like the po- I don't know if you remember yes. this, but. The poet, yes. the actual poet, like he him apparently that. that's interesting. Based him off of the poet, yeah. Weird. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, I need to read Dante's Divine Comedy. I know. Or maybe it. we're just giving it a lot of layers, <laughs> and there's not it's just like they take the name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that says that uh, this hitman is some sort of guide. <laughs> um. Yeah. We'll figure it out. 
it's so funny when Sam and Dean like get up from the, the mat or whatever they land on and and Sam is like, should we be killing anybody? Oh yeah. I love that line. <laughs> yeah. So great. Yeah. So so they they do, they get up and they're so confused. They're like bracing themselves for a fight and they're like, Yeah, there's no angels here. Um, don't know what to do here. And meanwhile, we like cut to the director who is reviewing the window jump scene and a crew member explains that they can either redo the jump because for some reason they're not happy with it. And if they redo that jump, it'll just take them 95 minutes to reset the window and then they can blow off the scene on the Impala where they talk about their feelings. And then the director's like, oh, yeah, you answer the hate mail. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, the other suggestion is to freeze frame on them jumping out of the window, um, which sounds really bad and really corny. But the director's like, fine, you know, season six, you know, basically, (laughs) who the fuck cares? (laughs) Yes, that was so funny. He was like, season six. okay." (laughs) (laughs) It was a little bit jumping the shark. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um. And the crew member, oh, the crew member at that point says it's a wrap on Jared and Jensen and there's like a bell and there's like movement all over the set. This woman grabs Jensen off to uh, makeup where she starts wiping his face down and Jensen's like, what are you talking about? I'm not wearing makeup. And then, of course, you know, he's wearing makeup. Um, His face is so priceless when he sees it. (laughs) Appalled. Yeah. Um, and then Sam has been pulled off to the side for an interview about season six, and he's very confused. Um, and, you know, she asks, like, what's next for Sam Winchester? And mm-hmm. he's just, like, kind of nervously shifting around. What so, I thought was really cool about this part, sorry, um, but what I thought was really cool was that how they incorporate, like, the actual story into the like what they're talking about like she's asking him like a question that's like how do you feel right now because we know that this this and this happened to you right and he's like oh shit this lady knows like everything that's going yes. on you know so I thought after that your time in hell or whatever yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and he's probably like like how do you know all about this yeah it's very it's probably very strange you know um Uh, So Dean meets back up with Sam and the only thing that he's upset about again is the makeup. But Sam has gotten the scoop from the interview and explains that their lives are a TV show. He, you know, Dean is Jensen Ackles and Sam says, I'm something called a Jared Padalecki. (laughs) (laughs) Something. (laughs) And I love when he's explaining it. He's like, well, that, uh, 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 according to that lady that just interviewed me, not many people watch this show. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really funny. Because <laughs> I yeah, think Jensen's they're... like, oh, people watch the show? And he's like, well, according to her, not really. <laughs> so they're funny. painfully aware. <laughs> um, so they walk out of the stage lot and spot Baby, where a man is splashing mud on the front windshield. And Dean is about to get pissed off Mm -hmm. and he's going over there uh, to yell at him when he turns and sees about five other Impalas in different states of being. So like there's one that just looks like perfectly fine. There's another one that's like completely broken down. Like it's been in a car crash. Um, Like you name it. There's just like all these different Impalas and they're slightly different too. I don't know if you noticed that. They didn't look exactly the same mm-hmm. um i, wonder I didn't if know if it was like <clears throat> a callback to like the other major incidents with the impalas because i felt like the one that looks all jacked up is uh-huh. kind of a callback to the first season finale you know where yes. they end up in that car wreck yeah i wonder that too it did look a lot because i don't think that we've seen the Impala that messed up since season one or yeah. you know, season one, season two beginning True. of, um, so that's, yeah, that's funny. It was um, pretty funny too. Cause John and I had just been watching a show where they were talking about the Dukes of Hazard and how many, uh, I think 
I don't remember, chargers or something they went through. And it was like 200 and something, 78 or something cars over the course of that show because they would just – they had all these scenes where they would jump up into the air, but you never saw them landing. So Yeah. (laughs) That's because everything falls apart when they didn't land so good. Yeah. (laughs) That's insane. I know. It was pretty funny. Yeah. You have to run out of cars at some point. (laughs) (laughs) Um so they walk off to the side and they start going through the events, like what exactly happened, trying to break it down when they spot Cass looking over at them and he's wearing his trench coat and everything. They go up to him and ask what happened. And, you know, they're very serious. They're like talking about Balthazar and all of that. And Cass he looks like he takes a second kind of looks down and then starts explaining in a very deep, rough voice (laughs) what happened. Um, And it's so funny because like, like, well, Gerardo, you mentioned that like um, the interviewer is kind of explaining things like that just happened to Sam. But I also really love the fact that like the script that the episode that they're doing is the episode that they are in you know like like it's yeah yeah about balthazar and everything yeah. <laughs> it's was, pretty like, ingenious really meta yeah 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 because he kind of um, had me going for a second like he started to like because it was so over the top at first when he first started talking i was like okay this is an actor but then he kind of got into it and he just sounded like Cass, and i was like oh okay shit is this actually him <laughs> I know. I love the delayed revelation. That's like, oh wait, you're just an actor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, okay, give guys. Me that <laughs> well, it's funny though because, like, you're right. It is over the top when he first starts talking, um, and it's just like bad writing, you know. Like, so he says. To keep you out of Virgil's reach, he's cast you into an alternate reality, a universe similar to ours in most respects, yet dramatically different in others. And so it's like, what? (laughs) So it's not the same. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, And so, yeah, so in this, it's, again, it's very ingenious because it's it's all a joke, but he really is explaining what's going on. He says, um, he asks for the key and Sam hands it over, um, which I, I forgot to mention, Balthazar had handed handed them the, that key um right before the whole the whole jump happened into this alternate universe and misha explains it opens a room where every weapon balthazar stole from heaven is um so dean's like what like he gave that to us um and misha says yes to keep it safe until i could reach you with those weapons, I have a chance to rally my forces. And then Sam's like, okay, so what's with all this TV crap? And then that's when yeah. Misha's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, did they put out new pages? And he pulls out his script. <laughs> what? And they're so like, good. new pages? What are you talking about? And he's... And- they realize, okay, no, this guy's not Cass. This guy's the actor. <laughs> um, Even he's like, Misha. <laughs> oh. He makes fun of his name. Yeah. It's like, what kind of name Yeah, is he's Misha? like, Misha? Really? And I think at some point he calls uh, Sam, he calls him Pedaleski. Yeah. Yeah. Pe- Pedaleski. He does. Um, which Sam does... Uh, Correct him on that. Yeah, he's like, no, it's not lucky. (laughs) Get it right, team. Yeah. Um, Okay, so they stalk off. Sam and Dean are, like, over it, and they grab the key back from Misha. And Misha takes out his phone and starts tweeting, and he says, okay, this is what he tweets. He says, hola, Misha amigos. (laughs) So great. I love J that. J squared got me good. Really starting to feel like one of the guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> well, 
And the greatest thing about this is that Misha actually tweeted all of this stuff. So oh, all, all, everything so. he says, <laughs> yeah. Like if you search search his Twitter, you'll find those tweets. I love that. That's so awesome. Much. <laughs> Uh, too funny. Um, yeah, Misha's again. Like, I don't think Misha's actually like this. Um, in the official companion, it says that he was like really excited to play like a douchier version of himself, but he said that he doesn't think that he did such a great job and didn't exaggerate enough. So it probably came off like, oh, this is actually how I am. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't seem douchey at all. He seems dorky. He seems dorky, but sweet. Like, exactly. happy, yeah. lucky, uh, like, you know, positive person. Yeah, he just seems, like, kind of innocent. Like, he's just trying to be this actor and get along with everybody. And they're yeah. like, what the fuck is your problem? I just want everyone to like me. Yeah. <laughs> with my right. little Ford Prius. and. Okay, so Sam and Dean come upon a trailer that has a sign on it that says J. J. Ackles. And Dean's like, hey, that's fake me. That must be fake mine. <laughs> so they go in and it's, okay, this is pretty douchey. It's like real fancy schmancy. There's a humongous aquarium and a, like a mini helicopter, uh, which is just extravagant. Uh, it's it's over the top. And there's a laptop on the table and Sam starts Googling and he Googles Jensen Ackles. Um, Meanwhile, Jensen's kind of looking around. I'm sorry. Dean is kind of looking around and there's like video of him. I, I guess from the episode they're filming or maybe a previous episode that they were filming, just like playing on a loop. So he's just constantly watching himself essentially. (laughs) It's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> I love me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he even grabs a magazine off the table, the coffee table. And it's a real, I think a real magazine that they had shot for Supernatural. Um, and he says, look at these male modeling son, son of a bitches. That's blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And we um, just watched Zoolander recently, too. And I just, it never fucking gets old. <laughs> Pretty good. So, so yeah. good every time. <laughs> um, so, okay. So I really love this part because Sam's like, okay, well, it says here that you're from Texas and you're on a soap opera. And <laughs> oh, God. Dean's like, wait, what? And he goes over and Sam starts playing a video of Dean or rather, I'm sorry, of Jensen on Days of Our Lives. And they watch a second of it, which is, oh, my God, it's just the the best footage ever. He's such um, a baby. He's such he's a baby. so young. Yeah. Yeah. It's adorable. <laughs> and Dean is visibly uncomfortable, shuts the laptop and says they need to get out of there quick (laughs) this is some like hellish universe um and dean says the plan is to do the spell again and jump through the window in order to get back okay yeah we'll see if that works i don't know if you guys caught it um but he's when they're talking about cast um i think um sam asked something and and uh, Dean is like, I hope he's in soul phone range. I thought that was really funny. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's punny. <laughs> Good one. It is really interesting that like Virgil is able to contact Raphael through blood, but not through... I don't know, by uh, any other means or like Sam and Dean aren't able to call and 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 reach some sort of entity through this alternate universe, you know? Mm-hmm. Because like we've definitely seen other instances of alternate universes. So like, I mean, I guess with those, they were all constructed by Zachariah, right? When we saw like future... Um, Dean and Sam, you know, 
supposedly like Sam taking over by Lucifer in uh, End of Days or whatever that episode was called. And the Croatoan virus has taken over the world. Um, and then also like when they're working at that one company together, you know, those are all kind of like alternate universes. But they always have like their limitations, right? Like, it's yeah. like, oh, on this, in this, uh, in this like situation, we can communicate with another, you know, another universe somehow. But in this other situation, like it's, we're cut off for some reason, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this one definitely felt like it was <clears throat> completely separate. Like they were mm-hmm. stranded <laughs> wherever it is that they were. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really funny when they went back to like the place that they came in through by the window and they're like looking through shit and like <laughs> Dean picks up a fake knife and like is trying to show it to Sam and he gets all scared. He like stabs him with the fake, the retractable yeah. knife. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then the director, he makes a comment that at least they're talking to each other. And they're like, okay, <sighs> but they're acting. Does really that mean weird. that they don't really talk in real life? <laughs> Um, well, they they do. I think they're like famously, you know, like, best friends. Yeah, and, yeah close. It, like that wedding photo that we see of Je- of Jared. Um, like if we unfolded it, like Jensen would have been right next to <laughs> him because I think he was like best man and everything. So, Aww. oh, I love that. <laughs> they try to get out of there by driving a beat up Impala. But another prop guy chases after them, knocking on the window and saying, because Dean, of course, is driving. And he's like, Mr. Ackles, Mr. Ackles. And then they get out. Yeah. And he's like, oh, thank God. Like, like he was definitely going to lose his job. Um, And they ask him how to get out of there. Cut to the two of them being driven by a chauffeur. Um, Clint, their driver, uh, I think, oh, damn it. Why didn't I double check this? What? Okay, okay, okay. Y- no, I think this guy is actually their body. Like, oh, like their real life bodyguard? S- I or think sofa? so. I've read that somewhere, but I don't know if I'm I hope getting so. that mixed up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Cliff Kosterman, driver and bodyguard, is played by Philip Morris Hayes. Oh, maybe not. But the <laughs> oh, okay, but the real <laughs> Cliff Kosterman actually appears in a cameo as a crew member who is putting mud on the Impala. Oh, oh. that guy. Yeah. They should have just gotten the same guy. That man, that would have been cool. He it would have been, but some people aren't comfortable, like Yeah. In front of the camera. I can imagine him being a bad actor. You know, it happens. That's true. (laughs) Yeah. Cliff, their driver, asks Dean where he wants to be dropped off. And he says he'll just tag along with Sam, um, a.k.a. Jared. And Cliff is like, oh, well, at least you guys are talking to each other now. And they explain, you know, because it's weird and all, that it's because they're going to be working on their acting together. You know, just uh, working on that. (laughs) <laughs> uh speaking of real gay though um i did read when uh, you were talking about the french mistake and the the title it does say in supernatural wiki that the term french mistake refers to a straight guy having a gay sexual encounter really what i didn't know that okay one how did i not know that two what is that like have to do with this episode? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, th- that's like one of like many things oh, that's yeah, yeah. called um the French mistake. So he, I don't know. Who knows? Who know? Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> I love when um, he asks where they where they are, and um, Dean's like, or he sees like Vancouver, and then like the Canadian maple leaf like <laughs> floats in front of him because it's a, a light. It's so funny. Yeah, 
and Jensen, um, Jensen, God damn it, Der- Dean looks, I was going to say Darren now, Darren. Dean looks very annoyed, like, yeah. oh, because he's like, oh, this isn't even America, like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh my he's god, in- we're not even in America, this is bullshit, <laughs> So they get to Jared's house, which is humongous. It's like super fancy. He has a very futuristic looking tanny bed. And Sam says that he must be the star of this thing. And Dean's like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, was it just me or did the tanny bed look kind of short for, J- for Jared? <laughs> it, it, it did probably look was. really short. They would need like a I mean, I'm like your feet are gonna be super white <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, he does has to do it in batches or something. <laughs> they need like a one of the tanning beds used by a basketball player or something. Just a s- special order nine foot tanning bed. Yes, yeah, he's gonna need a real big tanning bed. If he's going to be tanning. Um, he must have had to do spray tan then. Uh, I don't even want to imagine him with a spray tan. That's... Have you guys ever done a spray tan? No. no. Jen has. Okay, me neither. I think I went with her one time when she did it and it was very funny. That is hilarious. How did it come out? It looked good. I can cut it out. <laughs> if it, but I can cut this out if it went bad. No, thankfully hers looked pretty good. I mean, it looked, you know, she was uh, significantly darker than she was previously. So <laughs> it wasn't necessarily natural. But it didn't look bad. It wasn't orange. Okay. Let me put it that way. It wasn't orange. All right. Got it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, how do you how do you go about that? I've definitely used, like, a spray tan lotion mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that that works if you don't streak you know so yeah i just feel like if i went into a tanning bed the whole time i would be thinking i'm like expediting the cancer cells yes. in my skin and this is killing me right yeah, now i couldn't like i wouldn't be able to stop thinking about that yeah skin cancer skin cancer uh, skin cancer on top of that, I would th- I think I would get extremely claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could like see I would too. not be able to be there. Plus, I and don't I like told sweaty, you, so ew, yeah, no. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I I've told you this, Christine, but uh, there's a tanning bed death in Final D three. <gasps> oh yeah, yes. So that shit was scary. That part, guard for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, they hear this like really weird noise and Dean looks out the back and says, hey, you have a camel. And then Ru- wh- what we think is Ruby appears at the top of the stairs and says, it's an alpaca, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Do they have like a thing with alpacas? Okay. So the official companion Tell me all about said, it. well, just... Uh, it's funny because Jared, I think it was, or and Jen, Genevieve, his wife, his real life wife, um, said that they were also kind of like, what the fuck? Like, why do we have alpa- alpacas? And just the fact that there was like this big alpaca thing in Hollywood around that time, like Save what? the Alpacas was all over the <laughs> place or something. When Paltrow was really Be- into it. Probably because supposedly like alpacas uh, leave like less of a footprint on on. Oh, is that earth? why she says it's they're the greenest animal? <laughs> yeah, something like that. For a second, I was like, "Are alpacas green?" <laughs> yeah, I did not understand <laughs> what that meant. <laughs> and then, and then I love Dean's reaction. Like, yes, that's very important. <laughs> like, totally, <laughs> just like. Oh my god, so funny. Um well, she comes downstairs and Dean is like, Ruby? And uh she's like very annoyed. She's like, Don't don't call me that. She says, uh like that's not even funny anymore, whatever. And then she uh asks uh sam like oh how's work hun and then she gives him a big kiss and he's like what like he doesn't know what to do (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but also he Dean and says, Dean are both still like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- it's surprising that they weren't like, oh, I'm gonna fucking kill you, like <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. last time they saw her, I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Yep. So Dean starts to figure out that she's not actually Ruby. She's the actress that played Ruby, and she lives there because her and Jared Padalecki are married. Um, and he puts this together by spotting the wedding photo on the mantle. Um, she... Or Dean explains that they're there to work, and Ruby's like, you've never even been to our house. And she actually leaves shortly thereafter because she's going to some international otter foundation party or something like that. And, uh, and yeah, and so Sam's like, oh, yeah, I, I can't make it. Um, so she's like, okay, well, I'm just going to go off on my own. I wonder if um, that's a joke about her, like if she's like really like, you know, um, if she's like an advocate for animals or something, you know. I and wonder. Like, just yeah. Fun of her. Because that probably the, the, the like place that she's going or the the event that she's going to sounds ridiculous. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> one of Paltrow. I bet it was like just making fun of all of the actors and actresses in Hollywood at the time who were like, yeah, pushing environmentally friendly stuff. It sounds like that event that they went to in Dumb and Dumber to like save the owls at oh the end. My God. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of too. <laughs> yeah. Um that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, and and supposedly something was cut here where she had mentioned like we're auctioning off a signed Pilates yoga mat or something <laughs> like that because because Genevieve actually like does pilates um so that was supposed to be in there but i think they cut it so but that would that would have even been ridiculous to like oh you can you can get this autographed yoga mat at this otter uh preservation society dinner right (laughs) so um so she leaves and Sam and Dean are sitting around searching for the real spell ingredients and just like trying to use their credit cards to order them. Um, I think like Dean comes ac- across one credit card that's like maxed out completely, <laughs> yeah. but he's able to pull out another one and order. Um, uh, I think it's like the vertebrae of the, of a saint or something. Like that. Yeah. So what's a lesser saint? Do we know what that is? That's what they say in the show. You know what? I should just look yeah. It up. They do say that, but I don't. I don't know. Are there like tears of saints. Um, There's a musical I, I artist called Lesser Saints. <laughs> I thought Dean okay, was going to pull I, out all of his credit cards, and they would be completely maxed out. Wait. Uh, so a <laughs> lesser funny. saint is is. Uh, someone whose celebration is smaller or less than other ranks of sta- saints. Mm. That's what it oh. says here. So they just don't get as so big it of a seems party. Like, yeah, it seems like they're less important. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you caught this, but there's like a humongous picture of Sam in a cowboy hat sitting oh, like, behind I the caught it. table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how could you miss it? I literally, John didn't see it, and I was like, oh my god, look at that. <laughs> it's pretty great. Oh, it's so good. Um, That's probably not honestly, his real house, right? No, yeah, I was just about to say, it's it's actually not his real house. Um, they don't live in Vancouver. They didn't at the time either. At the time, they lived in California, and then I think, you know, now they live in Austin, but um yeah it's not it's not actually where they live um so okay this next part jesus so jen arrives home and sam goes to greet her um he calls her genevieve first and she's like she corrects him she's like you mean jen and he's like oh yes and then he asks about all of those earthquakes last year and she says yeah i remember that but on your show like in the last season 
And she tells him that he's been Sam for too long and kisses him. And then she holds out her hand where she has a big ass rock on it. Dude, and then Sam big <laughs> ass rock. <laughs> It felt like, okay, are they kind of trying to like show this thing off? Because damn, totally. it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, And Sam takes her hand and then they go upstairs. And they fuck. Like, yeah, is, they do. Is that, is that like, I don't know. I felt like a little weird. <laughs> it's not really him. Yeah, so, I, I think know, he I felt just, a little like, weird too. He was like looking around like, is this okay? Yeah. And then just totally did it anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's very strange. You're right. It's not actually Jared Padalecki, but. <laughs> like, what it does is, that say about Sam? Know. You know, like Sam's like, oh, like, this girl, I'm just going to like take advantage of the situation and pretend to be her husband. It's like, oh, that's kind of skeezy. <laughs> that's true. We've never seen Sam like that before. He was willing to to go for it yeah and especially with ruby who he has a history with like he i guess he yeah he did always want oh, that maybe that's yeah. why uh, yeah that makes he sense this is her mm-hmm. in that way mm-hmm. oh that's messed up <laughs> <laughs> So in the morning, Sam and Dean pick up the bones of the saint before it hits customs, and then they go to set. Uh, They try to finagle some extra time alone on set, but the director shoots that down immediately. He's like, yeah, you can do your little acting thing in front of our little camera thing, essentially. (laughs) Um, Mansplaining. (laughs) Well, yeah. And this is the part, oh my God, just the greatest, the greatest part of, I think, this episode. They start the scene and they do some like incredibly bad acting. They have like trouble hitting their marks. Dean looks super bad, making weird faces. Cass, we actually see, um, you know, Misha, it would be Misha (laughs) in this universe push away the makeup girl <laughs> like rowdy just pushing her out of the <laughs> and then also when they're like doing their lines they say cut he turns around and he mouths what the hell <laughs> yeah it's so funny when sam like doesn't know what to do with his hands or like his <laughs> they're just oh like floating God. out in front of him <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god and then dean looks like he's gonna he's constipated he looks like he has yeah. to take a he shit oh my god face. he's like leaning forward <laughs> yeah. like this like weird mad face oh my god and the best part he's like don't look at the camera <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's like looking up at the ceiling yeah. <laughs> oh so my god funny. i need to watch that scene again yeah, it's definitely good for a rewatch because it was just too funny. I, loved I thought it. it was so funny when he's like, he's saying, Dean is saying his lines, but he also says the stage direction. And he says <laughs> Dean grimly. And then like his line, oh, so funny. <laughs> and when you said that they missed their marks, he's like, he looks down and his feet are like two feet over from where it needs to be. And he just like scoots over. It's like, no, no, that's not. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> oh, man. Really it felt good. like they really had fun with that. Like, I wonder if they kind of just like let them loose. That's and, what I said. And let them do like, while I was what they wanted. Watching it, I was like, that must have been so fun to do. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it seemed like they were improvising. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> so the director asks if um they got anything they can use and the crew member is just like yeah we can maybe stitch something together it'll be um experimental <laughs> it's gonna be um, rough yeah but <laughs> yeah sam and dean are like done with it they're like can we please leave and they allow them to and then misha pulls out his phone for another tweet um, in this one, he says, I M H O J and J had a late one last night. R O F T L M A O. Uh, 
One, um, I love that his phone is so old. Two, I love that he like says it out loud, <laughs> like what he's typing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too good. Oh, um, oh, okay. Uh huh. And then, um, oh, I had something to bring up. Like, actually, Anthony brought it up, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're so smart! I hate you." Um, she, he when you know how they like come through the window. Yes. He says, what if that's a metaphor for breaking the fourth wall? You're so smart. Or Anthony's so smart. That's Anthony, yeah. I was like, oh my god, duh. Like, that's totally what it is. Like, why they have to come in that way. Or why they wanted them to come in that way. Yeah. I love that. That's good. Yeah, that is really good. I had... Did I read something else similar to that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we'll get to that later on. Um, So back of the set, they draw the sigil again on the window while the director talks on the phone with someone, just like completely complaining about them. And then they jump through the window, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, and back in Jensen's trailer, Sam says that nothing supernatural has ever happened there. They, you know, none of that stuff had happened last year. Um, so what if that's why the spell didn't work? Because there's no such thing as anything supernatural in this universe. And they kind of like talk a little bit about, um, the fact that that might be nice because like there's no angels. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, so we do, we do get that where they're kind of like, oh, well, it might, it might be nice to live this normal life. Mm -hmm. Um, just then through an, a sigil on another window, uh, it glows bright and then we see Virgil jump through it, landing in their alternate universe. Kind of like the Terminator. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it was pretty terminator yeah, it all was. like ready to go and <clears throat> plus you know, clothes and to kill people. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and then Sam and Dean start walking around the set looking for something. They come upon Virgil in a fake alleyway, who tries to use his powers, but no luck. And they're so happy that like he doesn't have any powers, and they start beating the shit out of him. And then <laughs> there's this like stunt coordinator who's who's like bragging to some woman like oh yeah you see all these stunts uh i i created all of this and then she points to sam and dean beating the shit out of virgil and she's like oh did you do this that as well and he's like no and then he like calls people to uh come and or go and pull them off they are beating ass yeah they're beating the shit out of him (laughs) yeah they really are i think like one of them has Virgil um, from the back and is holding his arms, and then the other one is like <laughs> punching him in the stomach. Also, did you notice that the set where they were was the set with the dragons? The episode with the guys who were the dragons in the sewer. Um, yes. Oh, you're totally right. It was the exact yeah. same set, and I recognized it. And then John recognized it. He doesn't even watch the show consistently. He just like comes in every now and then when I'm watching it. <laughs> And he was like, oh, yeah, that was the set with the jackets. <laughs> I was like, you are so That's right. That's so funny. Yeah. And then I did read that, like, the alleyway when they're first walking. Oh, wait, JK. No, that's later on. The alleyway later on is is the same alleyway in the Leprechaun episode. Oh. You remember? Like, they're walking down some leprechaun. They're, yes. they're walking down some leprechauns. <laughs> they're walking down some alleyway. The leprechauns are walking them down. Mm-hmm. Or something. Um, oh, okay. So in a conference room, the director and producer are talking to Sarah Gamble. And I'm sorry. I I don't think I had mentioned that this director is not just, like, some dude. He's actually playing Robert Singer. So this is supposed to be our, you know... Robert Singer, executive producer, writer, director of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's actually played by Brian Doyle Murray. Um, So a really great actor. Yeah. We just watched uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and he plays Chevy Chase's boss. 
oh, I don't even remember that. He's pretty great. Yeah, I'm I was surprised that they got such an awesome person to be Robert Singer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I thought I thought it was really funny when he um he's telling the girl like what's happening and he's like um well they were just caught beating an extra to death and she goes, "Huh." Yeah. <laughs> like that's her reaction. Mm. Huh. <laughs> it was also, really is that actually Sarah Gamble? Was that her voice? On the phone. Uh-huh. It's not. Boo! I know. I feel like they have a lot of chances to use like real people. Yeah, I don't I don't know why, but it apparently the voice was Hillary Jardine. I thought for sure they would at least do her because you wouldn't see her face. Like it was a really that was yeah. a gimme. She just had to talk into the phone. Yeah. It's it I I really wish they would have that would have been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other guy at the table is, oh, it's playing Jim Michaels, who we definitely have. Um, I think we've heard that name before as well. I think he's uh, an executive producer as well. Nice. On the show. <clears throat> it was funny when um, she's telling him like where Crip is like writing the new pilot and he's like, he sold what did he say octa snake or octa something like that and then he was like don't <laughs> buy anything <laughs> that was really yeah. funny uh octo cobra or yeah, something yeah there we go yeah <laughs> i know i thought that was really funny it's it's funny to like watching these episodes so far into the future because um <clears throat> when i was reading supernatural wiki it said that it was a reference to like all of those different sci-fi movies that had like that were coming out, like you know, like Sharknado stuff, and um, um, oh, but more yeah. specifically, nice. like oh god, what is it? Anaconda. I don't know. They've like Anaconda he, or something. Like even weirder episodes. <laughs> Or or movies than that. Like if you've seen some of the shit that comes out, like Shark Shark, ugh, I don't Shark Topis Shark So it's Shark-topus. a mix of between shark a shark and an octopus. <laughs> that sounds this is a horrible. real movie, guys. Uh, a real and Dino Croc, bad movie. No, no Dino Croc. That's just a an old di- Di- crocodile? <laughs> <laughs> That's just an right. old crocodile. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like crocodiles are dinosaurs. <laughs> I think, right? Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> Dino croc so. is just an old crocodile. It's just like an old ass crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, they're talking to Sarah Gamble, but not actually her. Um, And she's like, oh, well, okay, maybe I can fly up and, you know, just talk to the guys. And Bob is like, "Um, actually, Sarah, they don't really know you. Like, maybe we should just get Kripke to fly fly up himself. And then that's when Sarah's like, he's too busy riding Octocobra. Um... And also, what does it look like? I'm supposed to be running this thing. Um, so I thought that was so funny. You know, obviously, she's yeah. like taking over season six. And and uh, I mean, hopefully things weren't that shitty. <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone is behaving themselves. But yeah. I think it probably. I, I can't imagine that it was that shitty or they wouldn't have been able to joke about it like this. Yeah. It would have hit too close to home. But but yeah, I thought that was that was good, too. Um, so then we see Misha getting into his car. He's so smiley. He's just like smiling (laughs) to himself. He's so happy. And and he, and he walks right into a scary movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I thought he was going to turn on the car and then like, wham, was going to start playing on the radio (laughs) or something. Like (laughs) he looked like, um, he looked like a Chris Kattan character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so he starts tweeting, ever get that feeling someone is in the back seat? Frowny face. <laughs> and, then, 
And then Virgil appears in the back seat with a knife to Misha's throat, who like lets out a big squeal. <laughs> like a curly scream. It's so good. Yeah. I love it. That was really good. Um I you know what I couldn't find? Oh, okay, here it is. So I I, I don't know if you noticed, but he kept on like unbuttoning his shirts and stuff whatever he was wearing to show like a shirt underneath yes so apparently the shirt says namaste namaste on it. Mm-hmm. it looked like a like a you know a symbol you see in a yoga studio forgive me for being so ignorant yeah. of that but i yeah. think it's called an ohm oh right? was it an actual ohm symbol it- oh, no, it I says mean. here that the symbol in the shirt is a maha yantra okay Oh wait, I'm think. Oh yeah, it's like a. It looks like a three, right? And then like a little squiggly line above it. Yeah. Um. Sorry, so, <laughs> I'm like looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised by that because I thought I thought it was gonna be like his gish shirts or whatever, like the the big um, fundraising that he does and charity stuff that he does. So. But that's that's funny too. Um, okay, so in Bobby Singer's house set, Bob, the director, tries to pay them off with a raise to calm down their antics. He says not to think of them of, of I'm sorry of him as director Bob or executive producer Bob Singer, but as Uncle Bob. <laughs> and Dean makes a comment on what kind of person names a character after himself. <laughs> Um, and Dean tries to tell him that, you know, they're actually brothers. Like they're actually the Winchesters, they're hunters. And Bob is just like, okay, you guys are clearly having a psychotic breakdown, but I can work with this. He's like, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I love when he's like, um, he's like, dude, you can't come in on poppers. You can't smuggle kidneys for him, blah, blah, blah. And you can't make up your own lines. I mean, that will, that, like, he, like, makes it seem like the making up their own line is, like, the worst thing out of all of those things. Like, <laughs> so funny. Right. Like, I've worked with all of the other things. <laughs> yeah. and it's fine. But, uh, yeah. And Sam says he thinks Virgil has the key, he tells Dean. And then they, um, they say that they quit the show. So... In an alleyway, Virgil takes out the blubbering Misha from the car. He explains Mm. that there's no magic and he needs to make a call. And he kind of apologizes because, I mean, this guy is supposed to be, I think, like an angel or something, right? So he, he, he does seem to not want to do this, but he slits Misha's throat and then uses the blood to call Raphael. So a couple things here. Um, one is that he does say, I pray to God that, I don't know, he forgives me or something or that this works. So very Mm -hmm. much seems like, I don't know, an angel still in like God's ranks. And then also Mm -hmm. he says that there's no magic. They have not referred to whatever it is in the other universe as magic. They've never used that word. We've used that in trying to figure out like what it is that makes their universe supernatural, but they've never talked about it as though it were a type of magic. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And that to me takes it into like a whole other level because it's not just ghosts or something that we see as, as supernatural saying that there's magic. Like there has been other things that we've encountered so far recently like fairies um and leprechauns you know that are in this other kind of like fairy realm uh and dragons Mm -hmm. and shit like that and we're getting into kind of other areas of fantasy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they haven't they've never talked about it as magic still until now and it's said by an angel that is strange. Yeah, I I can't recall many times that they've used the word magic, maybe just with like the magicians and that sort of thing. 
but, and for some reason mm-hmm. well just like if there's no magic then why did the call work mm. I don't that was the, the the really strange thing to me yeah I, I don't like I don't they know. seem pretty um, cut off from everything you know Mm-hmm. so why did that work is it because it was like godly? Do religion things still exist? No, I don't know. I feel like that Maybe. perhaps, yeah. I don't know. It's just interesting that that like one thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because nothing else worked. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if it did work just because it is more of like a religious ritual, and technically, they. Sh- I don't know. I mean. If this but universe they, still has a god and everything, then they should be able he should be able to like break through to that. Yeah, but the the thing that they tried earlier wasn't that kind of a holy ceremony because they needed to get like um like a bone of a lesser saint and like the blood of a lamb and stuff like that. So like I feel like they're sort of equivalent, right? I mean, in the sense of like why when one would will go through and one wouldn't go through you know just interesting yeah what that reasoning is yeah Uh, obviously beyond like moving the story forward (laughs) you know yeah (laughs) well but it's interesting like the point that you bring up christine because i don't know when i think of the the word magic i do think of it as something different than perhaps what we always see with within supernatural. Mm-hmm. But I, I can't really put my finger on why or, or what that is. Yeah, me too. Um, I mean, I think to me it feels more fantastical, you know, like in, in books and literature and in movies. Um, to me, magic is something that is kind of centered more around like the worlds where wizards exist or dragons or, um, you know, kind of those other unicorns. Mm -hmm. Um, But not, you know, like where we've been rooted in this show is um, creatures and like ghosts and, uh, crossing the dead and and hell and stuff like that. It just feels like a different genre. <laughs> yeah, it does. So That's true. I thought that was really interesting. It was like, uh, okay, where are we transcending genres now? Mm. And it's interesting that they they reference it more than once in the episode. Yeah, because it's this time and then earlier. When they first get there, Sam and Dean, Sam says something like, there's no, like, I don't think there's anything supernatural here. There's no magic. That's what he says. And mm-hmm. it's just interesting that they both use that term. Yeah. You know, because yeah. for me, like, if an angel were talking about it, like, why wouldn't they say, like, God doesn't exist. So that means, like, his power doesn't exist or whatever. Like, using magic is kind of tethering it to like witchcraft and everything else that goes bump in the night you know Mm -hmm. right yeah so I thought that was interesting because it's just very it really stood out it was so different from how we've talked about all of this already yeah yeah they definitely are doing something where they're changing things around um So they they arrive back at Jared's house and Jen immediately comes running out crying, saying that Misha has been stabbed to death. And instead of like, oh, my God, or, oh, no, you know, like (laughs) some sort of sympathy, they ask where and she's like, like, what's wrong with you guys? Um, So they apparently find out where because they go to the alleyway where they question the homeless man who saw the murder happen. And he explains that the scary man killed the attractive <laughs> crying man the and talked to Raphael. Man. I love that part. Yeah. Um, 
and and talk to you know he doesn't know that this is Raphael but he tells him like oh like he talked to he prayed and then talked to his hand or whatever and then a voice came out and answered him and um basically that Raphael said that at the right time he'll grab Virgil through the window and bring back him and the key and um okay and then we see in a gun shop Virgil like kills a clerk and another patron and then takes some guns and he explains that he's the weapons keeper of heaven. So Mm -hmm. this is something different than that. I don't think we necessarily see in, um, Dante's Inferno, perhaps, you know, Bible or anything. Right. Like, Oh no, they're actually giving him a place in heaven. And that's, as yeah, the key, the the weapons keeper of heaven, which is which is new. Like, why is why haven't we been seeing Virgil chasing after Balthazar this entire time? Mm-hmm. Um, instead, it's Raphael had to actually send him as a hitman. Yeah, you know, right? I don't know. Maybe he can't leave the in like heaven. He can't leave the room, and that's why like He's he had assigned. to be let out. <laughs> Yeah. And also, I thought it was very Terminator like, too, when he's like, has the guns and the shotgun. I was like, this guy's like, it's like. He is totally Terminator that way. (laughs) You're so right. He totally is. Yeah. (laughs) Also, backing up a little bit, um, they just like let Sam and Dean into the crime scene. (laughs) Yes. Oh, yeah. Just like like, walking on in their civvies. They're not even like dressed up as pretend investigators or anything. You guys. Yeah, exactly. It's like you guys are clearly actors in this. Like, why would they let you <laughs> just like walk in? And then funny. come question this civilian who just got done yeah. talking to the cops. Yeah. Right. So silly. Yeah. I think um Yeah, they would they would definitely be like, oh, this is Jared and Jensen. Like they yeah. should not be here. <laughs> um So back at the set, Sam and Dean are thinking about what to do next. They say that it might not actually be so bad if they stayed there, which could happen if they stop Virgil from crossing over and they get back the key. Um, But I think either Sam or Dean bring up like, well, there's one thing that isn't good about this place. And that's the fact that we're not even brothers here. Oh, yeah, it's but then they, I thought that was great. But then they also said like, all of our friends are back there, and I was like, what friends? They're all dead. <laughs> oh my god! You know, by this point, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've got Bobby, but that's about it. Yeah, they don't really have a lot back there. I, do, do they have friends? I, <laughs> who are we talking about? Uh, so, yeah. I don't think so. I don't remember them having friends. <laughs> Um, so then we see Kripke arrive on set. And again, this is not played by the actual Kripke, unfortunately. And Kripke goes up to Virgil, who starts shooting him. Um, and then Virgil shoots Bob. Um, and then he just goes around shooting up the place. Mm -hmm. Except for one dude who's like dodging bullets. What the Did fuck you was notice that, that about? Also, he was French. Did you was notice- that the French guy? Yes, that was the fucking French guy from the beginning. He, for some reason, was sitting next to the director and had a French accent. And I was wondering. Wait, the- hold on. I was wondering at the I beginning. I thought it was somebody else. I don't think so. I thought it was, I thought I it was somebody else, too. Hmm. Wait, mm-hmm. who do you, wait, can we all say it at the same time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have gotten there. That's why I don't want to say it. Oh fuck, no, probably not. Don't say anything. No. Okay. <laughs> what do you <laughs> Te- text it to me? Okay, wait. Text it to wait, me. I'm gonna No, no, wait. You're gonna have to text it to her because our show is spoiler free. I was gonna say I'll take my headphones yeah, yeah. out and you can say it, but we don't want everybody to know. Wait, but Okay, but you're gonna re- you're gonna reply right now, right? <laughs> like if you th- if that's who you are, or uh, that's yes, who you yes, thought. Yes. 
No, you'll you'll it's gonna be a mystery forever. <laughs> um Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gotten there. We have Oh, okay, okay. But was it that is that what you thought? No. That's he, okay. Uh, so Gerardo thinks it was a trickster. Okay. Whew. I th- I'm pretty sure that was him. It wasn't. Hold on. <laughs> I Are met him sure? in person. We've, we've seen him in person. <laughs> <laughs> we've <I've>, touched him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever. He's hot. <laughs> Ew, you really think so? I don't, yes, I don't. I'm so weirdly attracted <laughs> to him. I like his yeah. personality. <laughs> I like his good Definitely. personality. Oh. God. Charming as fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was the French dude from the beginning. I don't think it was him, but I don't know who it was. <laughs> I thought it was a trickster demon because I thought that's how this is all possible. Oh, like he's the one that made like this alternate reality. You know, it's like he's working with somebody and that's why they're able to put him in an alternate reality or whatever. That's what I thought. Because he dodges like bullets like. Yeah, he was I'm, I'm being really weird. Yeah, I'm trying to find. Um, maybe I can find it in in supernatural wiki one thing i did want to bring up while while i'm looking at this is that the fact that jared and jensen's real stunt doubles mike carpenter and todd scott were the ones fighting in front of the impala like right before the stunt coordinator is like oh hey pull pull them off that guy um i don't know if you noticed that they're like standing in front of a green screen and they're like oh pretending to fight. yeah i did and that's their actual stunt doubles Yes. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and see. Um, I'm sorry. I just need to <laughs> tout the fact that I am correct. What? I'm correct. The guy who was dodging bullets at the end was the guy from the beginning of the episode who was the French dude. I typed in to Google, who was the guy dodging bullets in Supernatural, the French mistake. And it says, Serge. Serge is working on the episode that Sam as Jared Padalecki and Dean as Jensen Ackles find themselves on. And it's got a picture of him from the beginning sitting in the chair next to the director. And it says, when Virgil starts killing the crew, Serge calmly dodges the bullets, quote, Matrix style. She's right. So does that mean that he has some sort of matrix powers that we will soon will learn or something? Because, yeah, that was just it was just so it was funny. Like, it just made me laugh. But it was just so strange. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, and the other thing that I had wanted to mention. So in the official companion, it says that creator Eric Kripke got shot three times. (laughs) And executive producer Ben Edlin doesn't recall Kripke minding. He says, I'm not sure if he didn't uh, didn't demand to be blown away, says Edlin. I think killing the creator in a place where we're talking about absentee gods and stuff is something that immediately appealed to Eric. <laughs> huh. So, because I, I thought, I did think it was very strange, like, Oh, well, they're just going to start shooting up the place and uh, and killing all these people that are playing real life people. But I, yeah, yeah, I think they were going for. I thought this, it was like, weird because I was like, what does this add to the story? Like this one scene, you know, because if they cut out that one scene, I don't think it'll change much. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, like if you just if they just cut to him starting to shoot people, we get the point that he's like <laughs> on set and that he's like shooting people, you know? Yeah. I think that was like definitely like an inside joke with him or something. Although I did also get kind of a metaphor from it because again, season six, Eric Kripke is not on the show anymore. So now he's like dead. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I agree. Like it, it didn't really serve any purpose for me and it sort of was jarring. I was kind of like, well, what, like what is going on here? Um, I could have done without it, but yeah, I think they were just having fun 
with themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Also, it. did you guys notice that he kept walking forward after yes. getting shot? Yes. I'm like, John what said that too. He was like, why is he still walking forward? <laughs> um, but yeah, I I agree. I don't it didn't really feel like it added anything. It was just kind of I don't know, kind of funny. <laughs> so Sam and Dean suddenly appear and they knock Virgil down, start rolling around with him on the floor. And um the sigil on a, a window that's like located on a set of like a motel room starts glowing and they see it as their chance and jump through the window and then we get a freeze frame which was a funny callback to yeah i thought that was really the whole, funny. like freeze frame thing um they land outside of the motel a, a real life motel now in in like what's their universe and Raphael, who is now in a female body tells the boys to give her the key she hurts them with her powers and they and they, you know, just give it up because they can't do anything um, anymore. And Balthazar appears to tell Raphael that the key she holds is actually to a locker room in Albany. So it's just a bunch of bullshit, basically. <laughs> um, he actually says that the real weapons are gone now. And Cass appears all of a sudden and then says, dun, dun, dun. That the weapons are within him now and she can't do anything about it. And then we see this like lightning which flashes a shadow of of wings behind him on a wall. So and cool. um he was looks very totally sexy. badass. <laughs> he was very sexy in this in this uh scene. Mm-hmm. And so was Raphael. That the he was like a really hot black woman, which was mm-hmm. like amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 She was really intense it was great yeah um and she oh, oh he tells Raphael that if she doesn't want to die tonight then she better leave and she disappears immediately she's like not messing with that um Balthazar also disappears and Cass takes the boys back to Bobby's house and there's a huge broken window there it's still raining down and he says that they use the boys as a diversion um it was actually balthazar's plan but it was necessary in order to stop Raphael from taking over heaven dean is obviously very upset that he and sam were used but Cass says that soon he'll be able to explain and he just disappears Um, I thought when he like brought them inside, I thought he literally had just brought them inside. Like, um, they were standing right in front of like the set, (laughs) right? When they, whenever, or no, wait, no, they were standing in front of a a real window when they came into this universe. I thought he had just taken them into that room. (laughs) And I was like, why didn't they just walk (sighs) through the door? Like, why is he like transporting them? (laughs) Um, but did you also notice that they recreated the scene they were trying to film? Because um, whenever Cass is like trying to explain, they he turns towards the camera like in that scene that they were acting bad in, and Dean and Sam were like in the background. I thought that was a really cool like callback to the beginning of the episode or like earlier in the episode. That is cool. Amazing. I love it. Uh, yeah. This episode is pretty good. <laughs> well, and then we just end the episode with Dean kind of saying like, oh, hey, we're back to this moldy piece of shit house <laughs> and we're broke and this sucks. But Sam says, hey, at least we're talking. <laughs> and then that's how the episode ends. Aww, pretty cute. They love each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that awe moment. Um. But yeah, I I really love this episode. It's pretty great. I did too. And I was already thinking about ranking and like what we usually kind of rank on. And I could see it being really high just because it was so clever and funny. But I don't know how much it added. Like the other thing that we kind of rank on is like 
how important it is to the overall plot. And in the grand scheme of things, I mean, yeah. they were, it was, technically this was kind of a filler episode. It didn't really do anything for the plot, in my opinion. But it was incredibly well done. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I think that it was like, I, I think that it was a nice distraction from everything else that was going on in the season. Mm. Like, it was a nice, like, reprieve from that, you know? Yeah. Um, and maybe it was, like, just, like, a filler thing that they were, like, what can we, like, what experimental thing can we try now, you know? Um, which I thought they did very well. I thought it was very clever how they incorporated the storyline from the other universe into this universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was hilarious how they can make fun of them. Like, they were just, they were just so good at being like their character pushed into their actual life, you know? Right. I don't know how they, else to explain it. I, th- I thought it was very good acting as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really good acting. And also on our ranking right now, um, Mystery Spot is kind of similar, I feel like. It was also really high. And it it had some interesting parts of it that, you know, were kind of like good information for the plot, but it, didn't further the plot really it wasn't like super important to like what was actually happening it was just Mm -hmm. a really good episode and that's at number two right now on our list well and what i was gonna say was i i definitely agree with you and i thought of mystery spot also but i think what mystery spot does bring is a lot of like emotional yes levity to the show like just sam kind of having to deal with dean's death and it does add some character development which i feel like they were trying to do with this episode with the fact that they kept on harping on like oh we're not talking and and hey we're brother we're actually brothers and that's pretty that's Mm -hmm. better than money and and that sort of thing but it didn't work yeah i don't think that they did a very good job of that i think they did a great job with the humor and and with making this like r- epically meta um and i think it gets a lot of points from me for that but yeah d- as far as furthering plot it did further pl- the plot a little bit but it didn't do enough with the character development yeah yeah i think that those scenes were pretty short you know because it was like and like that part where there were like two major emotional scenes in this episode the last one where um you know, they like talk about how they're still talking or they're talking now. And also earlier when he tells him like, well, Sam, maybe you don't want to go back to the other universe because you have it so well here. Like, I thought those were sprinkled in like, but they were very short. So it didn't carry much weight in the overall story. And it was also kind of weird too, because like, I thought that conversation about Sam maybe wanting to stay there was like, where is that coming from exactly? Like, I don't feel like Sam yeah. in the in the recent episodes that we've seen since he's ha- gotten his soul back. I haven't felt like he was like, this sucks and I hate it and I don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, like, why is that suddenly something we're projecting onto him that, like, he would be happier in this universe? I don't know. Yeah. But it does say a lot that they're filler episodes, quote unquote. Um are still pretty amazing you know they still can entertain and and you know it does flesh out the universe a little bit more you know we now know that there's places that don't have magic you know or don't have you know whatever is fueling supernatural uh, beings um but i i didn't think that i think that it's just one it's just really cool that you know mystery spot again is on you know very high on your list and that didn't add very much to the story either. So it's it's cool that they can still use and make entertainment or make entertaining um, you know, episodes when it doesn't really add much to the story. Which with a show this long, you kind of have to do, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you better be able to do because you're gonna <laughs> there there has to be a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know exactly like where you might be thinking, but I kind of am thinking underneath number 30, which right now is Sympathy for the Devil. What do you think about that? I don't know. That's interesting. I think I was automatically looking higher, but I am not married to that. 
Um, you guys have to agree on the, the like the number. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Just, just asking. Maybe you both. Yeah. Have sometimes your own list. one of us will feel like more strongly about it than the other one and make a case for it. <laughs> um. But yeah, generally we have to come to an agreement. Um. Because 29 is Zhu and Bella. But 23 is the real Ghostbusters. That's true. Oh, yeah, that's and that was episode. another meta one. Uh -huh. I know. That one's definitely on the top of my one of top five, perhaps. Ooh. But yeah, I do feel like maybe this one was better than that one. That's hard. Mm -hmm. I had seen that one and was like, you know, that's another... It feels kind of like this one because it was really funny. It was meta. It uh, was kind of on the same level of importance. Thinking it is better than the real Ghostbusters. And see, like, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. I think it's better than that as well. But Abandon All Hope. I mean, that's where Joe and Ellen die. I mean, that's some. That's true. That was right there. Oh, my God. That was so sad. Yeah. I know. See, like, if I'm looking at that, I'm like, that's my stopping point. It can't go above that. No, I'm kind of with you, too, on that, because the other ones above that, I don't know. I think I like all of those better, too. So mm -hmm. what What if we did that? What if – could it be the new number 20? I think that works. I think it makes sense. Okay. The French mistake. So that goes underneath Abandon All Hope, which is number 19 right now. And then above. Which one's dead, that one? Dead, um, Abandon All Hope is where Joe and Ellen die. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. And then Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid above that one, which is the one where um, Bobby's, Bobby's uh, like all of the townspeople where Bobby lives. That was such a good episode. Dead people come back to life. Yes. It's real messed up. But yeah. it's good. Yeah. That one's, I mean, that one's really good too. These are all really great episodes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. What number, what, how many episodes have you guys ranked already? Well, now I think it's 119. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yes. <laughs> How do you remember all? Well, I guess you can <laughs> we don't. Up, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we forget sometimes. Um. All right. Well, that means that uh, season six, episode fifteen, the French mistake, is going in as a new number twenty, and this one's going in the trunk. All right. What a fun cool. episode. Um. That was lots of fun. Gerardo, yeah, I'm so glad you could join us. Thank you so much for having me. I love coming on here. So Yay. Bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we missed you. It was it was too much fun. So that that would definitely be possible, I think. Oh yeah. Um for sure. So I guess you guys, we, we talked about this briefly. But um, we're going to be taking a little hiatus um, for the holiday break. And just make sure to follow us on How Would It Help Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook for any updates on when we'll be back. Um, and then, you know, we'll be back soon to talk about Continue Season 6. And then the next episode is And Then There Were None. So, yeah. We'll, we'll be talking about that pretty soon. Yeah. Good job, guys. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and happy holidays. Yes. yes happy holidays, everyone. Yes. yes happy safe. holidays. Stay warm. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Until next time, we'll see you on the highway to hell. Bye. 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 Bye.